Hey guys, it's David from Gigi's Fabric Shop, home of Juki Junkies, and today we are going to talk about a very controversial topic on oiling your Juki TL sewing machine. A lot of people are over oiling these machines and experiencing leakage out of different areas you don't want to see and also black residue. So today we're going to clear up this topic and tell you how to oil your machine properly so you're not over oiling it. And we're also going to break open the machine and kind of show you where the oil is actually going when you oil it and why it's so crucial to oil those areas. So in the manual, it says when you first open up your machine, you're supposed to do a uh, seven to eight drops of oil in each of the holes. And we have found that is way too much oil for your Juki TL sewing machine. So we recommend when you first open your machine, you just picked it up from the store. It's brand new. It just arrived at your house. Just go ahead and drop one to two drops of oil and the two, four holes up top and the two holes here and one on the hook, which we'll kind of, we're going to show you those areas a little bit more in depth as we go in the video, but let's just get that out of the way. You just get your machine one to two drops in all the areas, and that'll be your start period for your oiling method that we're gonna show you in this video. So now that you are freshly oiled and you're ready to go, let's tell you what you should do for the scheduled oiling on the Juki TL sewing machine. So what we like to recommend is every three to four months, you're gonna do one to two drops on the four holes on top of the machine. And if you can see here, there's two holes right here. So we have one, two, three and four. Do not oil the screw holes or this little hole in the front. That is not an oiling port. Okay. And now what I want to do is I'm going to take off the top and show you where the oil is actually going when we put it in these holes. So it's a little bit more, um, well, visual for you guys. So you know what actually happens with this oil, um, because a lot of people think that it's okay to over oil the machine or oil it every couple hours of sewing. And what we see is oiling dripping out of the buttons around the um, machine right here in this crack and you really don't want to oil over oil your TL machines because if you do that it can actually get in some of the circuit boards or the motors and fry it. So it's very crucial to not over oil your machine. So now let's take off the top and show you how you can check um, and, and kind of visually show you where the oil is going and also how you can check to see if um, you're over oiling your machine or if it needs more oil. So to take off the top like I said don't try this at home. This is for a Juki certified mechanic, but I'm just going to take off the top and there's just two screws right here that I like to take off. One and two. Make sure the bobbin winder is engaged like that. And I'm going to go ahead and take off the top here just like this and unplug this little wire. Like I said, don't try this at home, but I'm showing you this for demonstration purposes to show you where the oil is actually going. Alrighty. So now that we have the top off, I'm going to show you what the oil wicks look like. So there's one here, 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 and here and here. And how you know it's well oiled is if you can see that it's a little bit more like grayish or yellowish in tone or turning black, that, that means it's definitely well oiled. If it's like white, that means it's dry. So you want to make sure that your oil, your wicks look kind of grayish um, in color and maybe a little bit blackish. Blackish means it's probably a little bit over oiled because it turns black when it's got a lot of oil just sitting there. Um, so this one looks good. You can also kind of just do a little squeeze test and see how much falls onto your hand. Um, so we look good on this machine. We have plenty of oil on all these oil wicks. And let's go ahead and look at the top of the machine and see where these wicks are actually dripping oil onto. Alrighty, so now that we kind of covered the lid in the oil wicks and where the oil is going from those ports, let's show you where these wicks drip down onto. So the front two holes on this lid, one and two right here, they drip down in this area, okay? They're gonna be supplying oil to the needle bar, which is this little felt pad right here, you'll see, captures some oil, and the presser foot bar. If you notice a lot of black residue on your presser foot bar, that typically means you're over oiling your machine and you can probably take it back a little bit less. Like I said before, we recommend three to four, every three to four months, one to two drops on all four of these holes on the top. And if you're noticing a lot of black residue there, then you could probably tone it back to one drop every three, four, every three to four months. Um, so that's very crucial to kind of watch your machine and understand when it needs more oil. Another way of telling if your machine needs more oil is you can shine a light down these two holes here and you can tell if that wick looks oily, if it's grayish in color, yellowish, um, then you know it's, it's well oiled. If it's super white and dry looking, then you know it probably needs a little bit of oil. So now let's go ahead and go to the right side of the machine. 
on the top and show you why it's so crucial that you do not over oil these ports over here. So over here we have the main shaft right here and this is collecting oil from these wicks on these oiling ports over here. It's very crucial to not drop too much oil on this side. I typically recommend one drop every three or four months, not even, don't even push two ever. Because if, it, if you over oil this area, which I've seen people do, um, it'll drip out of the machine in the button areas or get down in the motor and cause it to uh, burn up. Or you can even get oil on your circuit board and cause a circuit board to short out. So it does have a cover, so it's not going to get oil on it, but there is a chance you could do that. So make sure that you're not dropping three, four, five, six drops on here, especially every few hours. I've seen people drop four to five drops of oil on these holes every couple hours, and before you know it, it's dripping out of the machine, and there's no telling when they're going to accidentally drop oil on the circuit board or the motor. So it's very crucial not to over oil this area, okay? So now that we have that covered, I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on, and we're going to show you the other oiling spots. So you might be wondering, how does uh, excessive oil splash on the circuit board or get in the motor? Well, if you're dropping tons of oil on that wick and it's just dripping down in this area, these parts move, okay? And when these parts move, it tends to splash the oil around the machine. So if you're over oiling and it's dripping down on these metal components that do need oil and it's just dripping on it, when these components move while you're sewing fast, it can splash, it can land over here on the circuit board, it can land on the belt and cause slippage. Um, so it's extremely important to not over oil these holes because if you do, you're gonna experience a lot of splashing of that oil and it can land in areas it's not designed to land. Now that we've kind of gone over where the oil goes on these top four holes, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the cover on. And remember, this is, not, um, this is for demonstration purposes on how to put and remove this cover. I don't want you guys doing this because it's really not the easiest thing to do. And if you mess up your machine, it won't be pretty. So let's go ahead and throw this sucker back on. We've got that back on there. And I'm just gonna plop my two screw, screws in here. And I didn't drop any oil on this machine specifically today because it did look like it had plenty of oil. And like I said, for you guys, since I don't want you removing this top cover, you can always check and see, and I'm just kind of repeating myself as I uh, tighten this down, you can always check by shining a light through these holes and looking at the oil wicks uh, through the top and noticing if they're gray or yellowish and they look shiny and they have oil, then you're good to go. Um, but once you get the machine, you oil it once or twice, you know every three to four months, one to two drops, that's it. So now let's go down to the throat area. We have two holes here, and these two holes here are a little less, um, I guess, sensitive, you could say, to oil. So if you were to over oil these two holes, it's not going to be the end of the day because it doesn't drip down into areas that have any computerized components. And I'm going to show you guys that here in a second. We're going to remove the whole bottom of this machine and show you where the oil goes when you drip it into these two ports. Now remember here it's the same timeline as the top. Every three to four months one to two drops of oil. On these two I probably do two drops of oil every three months um, because like I said it's not too big of a deal if you over oil these as it's just metal components and it's not going to hurt it at all. So let's go ahead and take off the bottom. One other thing I wanted to let you guys know is when I took off this top lid, like I said, don't do this on your own, but if you're showing this to your Juki mechanic in your area, make sure that he has this engaged when he removes it, and when he puts it back on, it's engaged as well, and then you can just disengage it, and you're good to go. Because if you have it engaged, it's just going to go back very smoothly, and it's all in the same position. So just keep make sure that that's the case, okay? Alrighty, so now I'm going to show you where the oil goes when you oil the throat space area with those two little holes. And like I said, not super crucial to over oil. It's not going to hurt the machine at all. It just drips down in this pan and there's two, four, six screws that come out here. And here is my pan. So as you can see, any excess oil that you oil in this area will drip down in the pan. And that's kind of how you know if there's too much oil. You shouldn't have, I mean, it's okay to have a little bit of oil there because it does splash around, like I said. Um, when the shaft is moving, the oil tends to fall off of it sometimes. So I just want to show you where those oiling ports are going. Um, and it's pretty much dripping. This one goes right into this area right here, which is just a the main shaft, one of the main shafts for the hook. Um, and it's just oiling the bearing and the shaft. So it's all metal components down here. And like I said, over oil will kind of just splash down into the pan. And this next hole on the right side, where is it? Right here. That's oiling the, I believe it's the shaft too as well. So as you can see, it's just a bearing inside this shaft. It's encased. The hole drips down in there, keeps that lubricated, and any excess oil will drip down over here. 
So here's the bottom of the machine. If you've never seen a TL opened up, this is how beautiful they are. Look at all this metal and just super strong parts. It's pretty cool. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put this cover back on. And how you can check if you're over oiling these, really the only way is to take off this cover. So you can't really check that, but like I said, it's not super crucial if you accidentally drop one to two drops a little bit more frequent. It's not gonna hurt your machine like you would if you over oiled the top where there's a little bit more uh, electrical stuff to get oil on. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and put these six screws back in and we're gonna show you the hook and how you should oil the hook. Hey guys, did you know that JukiJunkies.com doesn't just have Juki sewing machine parts? We also have Notions on our website. Check out the bobbin saver, the serrated scissors. We have rotary cutters, threads, pins for your projects, rulers, all different types of sizes, and patterns. And most of the patterns even come with classes or have classes that you can get as an option so you can learn how to use the pattern. We even have discounted fabrics. These are $5.99 per yard if you get 10 yards, 20 yards, or 30 yards, and they are super, super cool. So check out the Notions tab on JukiJunkies.com. Hope to see ya. <gasps> Gigi just called. She's saying that there is a Notions 5 code to get 5% off all of your Notions on JukiJunkies.com. Use code NOTION5 for 5% off. Now this is one of the most crucial spots to oil on this machine, and it's also the most frequent area to oil. So this is your hook, okay? And you're gonna wanna drop one drop of oil right on the second little step. So here's one, here's two, right here. And you can see where the metal is moving. You're gonna wanna drop one little drop right here. And you wanna do that once every single time you change out a full bobbin. So not every time you change colors, but every time you go through a full bobbin. So let's say you do two colors and you're doing half of them, then you know that it's probably been about a full bobbin. Do one drop of oil right on that second ledge of your hook or it's also known as a race, I believe. Um, so just make sure you do one drop of oil there every time you do a full bobbin rotation. Um, and also, I love using the TriFlow Pinpoint Lubricator Pen, which we also have on JukiJunkies.com. This makes it really easy to get a drop right there on that uh, hook every single time I change out my bobbin after going through a full bobbin. And it's also a great time when you oil that to use your cleaning swabs to clean out the hook assembly area or clean out any um, lint and debris that you might find in this area. These, might, these cleaning swabs make it really easy and they grab the lint and pull it out. So one thing I also wanted to mention is how you might need, when you might need to oil your machine more often than what we mentioned in this video. Possibly your machine's sitting in a car for a few days and it's extremely hot and it's drying up all that oil. Or if your machine sits in maybe your attic or your basement or somewhere where it's, the climate is a little bit def different and a lot hotter or a lot colder, then you might have your machine drying up a lot faster. So that's when you might wanna change up your oiling method a little bit from what we talked about in this video. But if it's just sitting inside every three to four months, one to two drops on all four holes up here, two drops down, or uh, in these two holes down here, and one drop on that hook every time you go through a full bobbin, uh, that is going to be the proper amount of oil for this machine that we found and our Juki rep has found as well. So now one other thing to make sure that you guys know is that we do have this TriFlow oiling pen on JukiJunkies.com and you can refill it with the two ounce or the six ounce uh, bottle so that way you can continue to use this pen. You don't have to buy the pen over and over again. Remember to make sure to put that rubber cap on nice and soft because you don't want to jam the rubber into the point. So that is that. Cleaning swabs, very important to purchase. And uh, one other thing to um, mention is if you guys have any questions on oiling your TLs, feel free to drop a comment down below, ask us in the comment section, share your experience. Maybe you have over oiled your machine and you've noticed oil dripping out of the edges. I would love to hear all of your experiences with that. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Like it, share it with your friends that have TLs. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on the post or the notification bell down below so that way you're notified every time we post on JukiJunkies.com or J JukiJunkies YouTube channel. So thank you so much and we look forward to seeing you guys in the future videos. Hey guys, make sure you like this video and drop a comment down below because in three weeks I'll be picking one comment, one random comment, to win these three goodies. You're going to get the TriFlow oiling pen, the two ounce refill bottle, and some cleaning swabs.